volunteering. And welcome Maureen Gardner to our program in buying and selling online. Maureen. Thank you, Roy. As Roy said, my name is Maureen Gardner and my husband and I moved south from Plattsburgh, New York to a slightly warmer climate in Chatham about probably 12 years ago. And you know, I started with the clothing barn and as Roy said, I realized that you know, sometimes things were coming in and just the market there was just not good for the items that came in. So I started to put a few things on eBay and that's expanded so that a good portion of the funds that we can give to charities and give to different mission projects come from the eBay sales that the church does. Today's program, I'm really going to focus more um, on getting you started. There are a lot of things that I can't delve into because of the nature of what okay, that eBay can be. So I am gonna share a screen with you. And the, this one of the screens that I'm gonna share is I think the email that was supposed to be going out today and you may not have had a chance to read it. So I'm gonna briefly go through it and I'm going to share my screen. Hopefully this all works well today as it did yesterday. And so I put this together. This will be very similar to what you'll see when you receive your email from the library. I'm going to go through, I'm not gonna dwell on it a lot. Um, I'm just wondering if there's a way I can move the pictures of people so that I can see the whole screen. Um, do you all see a full screen in front of you or do you see people on the side. I see them on you on the side. People, yeah, I see people. We you should be able to go to. Uh, I can see most of it though. The speaker. Yeah. Somewhere there's a command to see speaker, right. only rather than the um, whatever they call it. The gallery or the screen. The gallery, side by yeah. side, yeah. And also, Maureen, uh, your your advanced slides are on the far left. Yeah. So to speak the presentation um, mode, it, that should get rid of those. Okay. Um, I actually was finding that easier to deal with. I'm just trying to see how I can move it so that I can see the whole screen myself. I'm not seeing the whole screen on my computer. You just have to change from gallery view to speaker view, and that's in Zoom itself. That's the Zoom setting. Up in the top and view options. Maybe if Diana is still on, uh, she can assist. Yeah, I was listening to, to yeah, I would do the same thing. Like there's a, if you go to the upper right hand corner, it should say view or at the top, there should be view options in Zoom. That's not going to change how other people see it, Maureen, though. As you okay. just need to go into the presentation mode, as Maria yeah. was saying, and get rid of the slides on the side, then it'll be bigger. And um, each computer itself decides how they're going to view it. OK. Well, I am looking to see if I can find that. Uh... Maureen, I think if you go to the right, it says slideshow on your on your PowerPoint up at the top. There you go. Right. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. She there you go. Not that top, just below. Okay, here we go. I see okay. slideshow. You did it yesterday. I know you did it. There you go. It's interview. Yeah. Yeah. Just just tap yeah. that. Click. Yay. Oh, good. Okay, I'm not really sure what you're seeing now, but um, full screen. Your time one slide. One slide. The first slide. Okay, so I'm going to go to the next one. There you go. Are you seeing the whole thing? Okay, I'm just going to assume you. Are. Yes, we're seeing the whole thing, Maureen. You're good. Okay, because I'm not <laughs> on my side thing. Okay, so. Basically, this is information, again, you'll be getting from the library. 
Anytime you join any kind of an online selling, you have to register, but generally they'll ask for personal information, which you'll expect to have from any, any online selling, your name, address, probably credit card number, bank information, so they can send money to you. You'll register with eBay. They have a new system now as of about a year ago called Managed Payments. So the money goes directly to the bank account that you choose, you know, that you have set up with them. So you don't have to transfer it from PayPal to your bank account anymore. And some people don't like to have the bank account exposed, so they'll set up a separate account for eBay. Totally up to you. I'm going to see if I can figure out how to do my next slide. Um, okay. Again, you're going to be doing pictures. If you start looking on eBay, you'll see a lot of pictures are very difficult to, to actually tell what they're selling. So it's really important to get a really good picture. So people are, because they come up very small on eBay, it has to be light enough so that people can tell that it's a dress as opposed to a black blurb on the screen. Just something you know, that you find, you'll, you'll notice it when you are looking on eBay that some people take terrible pictures and you can't tell what they're selling. So the other thing is, is that you can put up to, I think it's, 12 pictures without any charge. If you have something that you need a gazillion pictures for, there'll be a charge after that amount. The other problem is with monitors, as we all know, gray, you know, gray looks different on different monitors. So I always put on this no color match guarantee when I'm listing things. I've started to do that because people say it doesn't look like the color that they saw on the screen. And that's understandable. Um, the other thing is, is when you're trying to decide what your item is worth to put on, write the item out, look for it on eBay, then do not you know, take what you see there, but somebody may say this is worth $300. I always go to the sold, you know, go to the part that says sold so you can see what people actually sold things for. That is better guide for you to decide on your value than looking at what is for sale. And you can judge kind of a middle range, a high range. The other thing is eBay does take a percentage, can be up to 30%, depends on what you're selling. So keep that in mind when you're selling, that you're not gonna get the full amount. There are fees involved that eBay deducts from your, your, your sales. Um, breakable things, and somebody was talking about collectibles. If you have a collectible that's breakable, just make sure it's packed super well, and make sure you send a priority mail because it'll be insured up to a hundred dollars. If you don't, you're kind of out of luck. You know, with the you know with the uh, amount, you won't get anything back, or unless you insure it. But priority mail insures up to a hundred dollars, so keep that in mind. Um, this is something that I found out as well, is that when you're shipping, if you're shipping to somebody and say, I want to ship it to an APO box, which is a um, military box, once you send it and it reaches the military base, the post office is no longer responsible for that item. So if the person says they didn't receive it, you're out of luck. So I just write down there's a place on eBay where you can exclude things. And that's one of the things that I exclude. I also ask for, I also don't send to just a post office box. And I know that for rural people, that's a challenge because that's what you have um, as I did in our previous you know, um, house. So what I do is I ask people to just add a street address. You know, you can say route, blah, 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 post office box, you know, North Chatham post office. You can add that, but some people like myself will do that. And the reason again, is that if people have only a post office box, um, again, they can say, I never got it. 
you know, um, and you have no recourse. So just keep that in mind. Um, I'm actually trying to see what this one is. Oh, whoops, I lost my screen thing. <laughs> um, let me just go back here. One. Okay, so I don't ship overseas because the shipping costs are generally much higher. And also people on the other end have to pay the fee when they receive it. So if they're not aware of that, then they'll get something. And if it's, I know our son lives in Amsterdam, so it's 10% of the declared value. So if he picks up a package that's, even though you've paid to ship it, if he picks it up and it says the declared value is $100, he pays 10% of that. So people are maybe not aware of that when they're buying and selling. You know, if you want to go ahead and do that, eBay does have you know, a way to make it easy to do it, but there is an expense for the person purchasing it. Um, oh, the other thing was returns. I accept returns. Um, and also if you sell something and it's really not the item that the person, you know, if you said it was blue and it turns out to be pink, people can send it back. Even if you say you don't accept returns, if you're not describing it correctly. Um, I do payment within three days. At the end of three days, if a person, unless they contact you, they're not gonna buy it and they just copped out on it. And you can set it up through eBay that after three days, it automatically, you know, goes, it's, our, it's an unpaid case and you get your value, your, the money that you pay basically, your final value fee gets returned to you. Um, these are some other things. Facebook Marketplace is local. So there's a Facebook Marketplace Albany. If you have say a desk or a bed, something big and bulky that obviously you can't ship you know, without a huge expense to someone. This is a great place to sell those things. Much, it's very easy to do. You set up an account. There's no, actually in this case, you don't have to share any banking information. You meet the person one-on-one, -on -one, you know, after going back and forth with emails. The only thing I caution is that you meet the person in an open spot so that people are around. And even if it's a large item, try to have somebody at home with you, that type of thing, um, just to be safe. Most of the time you say you don't deliver because it's obviously a big item. You're trying to, you're hoping they come with a truck. Craigslist, we've actually tried this and found out that it tends to attract a few more people that are scammers. So they, if you put your phone number down, somehow you get on a robo call and you'll be getting calls from all over the place saying that, you know, I know you're only charging $50, but I'll send you a check for a thousand. And my friend who lives in the area will pick it up and they'll give you the check when they pick it up. It's, it's a scam. So you have to be very careful on Craigslist. Also, I made a note that, again, if you don't want your phone number to be put on a robo call, you spell it out as opposed to writing the numbers down. Um, lots of other places out there, Poshmark, Poshmark OfferUp, Amazon, ThreadUp, each one of them has a slightly different policy. Some of them are 50, 50, some are 40, 70. So all worth exploring to see if, you know, there's a, a better one than eBay for you. I've done eBay for a long time. <clears throat> so I tend to go to it because it's easier other than going to um, Facebook marketplace for larger items. I'm losing my voice here. Um, so the next screen is something that when you go to eBay, there is a whole site on getting started on eBay. This will explain pretty much everything you need to know about doing eBay. I'm trying to see if I can move my screen down a little bit so you can 
whoops, let me go down. Again, I can't seem to get over to the slide down, but this is basically what you'll see. Getting started in eBay, there are a lot of things, eBay shares a ton of information. So if you have trouble getting started, this will answer a lot of questions. If there's a question that you don't know, or if you go to something and at the bottom, it will say, did this answer your question? And you can say, no, it didn't. And then some, you generally have an option to call or talk to somebody online. And you can get the, you know, your question answered. And they're usually pretty good at doing that within a, you know, depending on the season a short amount of time. So I was going to actually do a listing today with you just so you can see how the listing gets done on eBay. And I'm going to be using the church eBay account. So I have edited a little bit only so that the, obviously the church's personal information doesn't come up. So the next screen, I believe, shows you this is what your screen would look like when you go to sell. And if you see on the right hand top where it says my eBay and you drop down and selling is underlined, you would push that selling button. That brings up a very large screen which has all the data for your sales and for your listings, messages that you've received, um, your feedback, and this is one of the reasons I haven't gone directly to the church eBay because I don't think that's information ethically that I should share. So I've gone to the next screen, which shows you, again, I'm trying to see how I can get the screen to move up. Oh, okay, let me go back. No, nope. okay, so some reason I can't get my screen to go up, but in, okay, let me go back again. So there is on top of this something that says start selling on top of active listings. And for some reason that I can't move my screen down, but you would press start selling. Then you would come to a screen that looks like this, okay? And this is where I am going to share an actual live eBay page where I'll show you how to do a listing. And I am looking for it here. Um, hmm. Oh boy, I had it yesterday. Let me just say why it's not coming up here. Desktop. Okay, let me figure out. I apologize. This was working yesterday. Um, Maureen, yesterday, didn't you close the slide and then you went on to the eBay site? Or you went to the eBay site and then this closed? You couldn't have both. Okay, well. Let me go back if I can. If I do just, can you see this screen? Where it says sweater, anybody? Oh, sorry, I keep forgetting to unmute. Yes, I can yes. see it. Yes. <laughs> okay, oh, actually that's a slide. That's actually, that was my backup in case it didn't work, which, I'm trying to figure out why that screen is not showing up. Um, uh, do you, do, Maureen, do you have it open down below outside of your, your slideshow? I believe I do. You should be able to stop sharing then and click on, well, no. You should be able to click on that then to share that. Okay, let me just find it here. 
Oh, it got me somehow. Hmm. Um, okay, I'm going to go back to my stop share for a second here and find out where my page went, which I had up in the background. Hmm. My question is, can I bring it up now? You should be able to hit the share screen again if it's open. Are you sure that you have the eBay page oh, open? That's what I'm looking now to see yeah. somehow I had closed it. And I'm going to it now. While, while Maureen is uh, doing that, um, hopefully my dog will stop barking. I just wanted to mention that there will be time at the end for questions. So any questions that you have, you can put them into the chat and we'll we'll answer them at the end or you can just make a note and um, Maureen will be happy to. Okay, now answer. I am looking to get back to my Zoom screen. Okay, let me, hmm. I'm trying to figure out where I am here. Um, I'm looking for your screen again. Here we are. Okay. So I'm going to try that again to see if the screen will come up. Yes. Okay. Does everybody see this screen? Yes. Yes. Okay. So this is the screen that you would come to after you decide on what you want to list. Okay. And let me just go to the top of it um, if I can. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. That doesn't appear to be a live one, which is what I was hoping for. Oh, this is frustrating. Can't figure out why I can't get that page. Ma Maureen, do you have on your uh, slide and your slide presentation? Do you have the eBay uh, website that you can just click on that? Well, I do have it up, and that's where I'm confused as to why I'm not getting it. Um, hmm. Okay. Do you, um, do you want to see if maybe I can share it and then you could tell me what to type? Well, let me just, I'm trying to get now back to this uh, okay. live here because I've kind of lost track of where, I've got too many screens open now. So this worked so well yesterday. So right now you're seeing a uh, page that's kind of looks like an eBay page, am I correct? Yes. Okay. And I think right now I'm going to the correct one. Let me just see. No, it's not live. Ugh. Okay, I'm trying to figure out why it's not showing up on my, um, I'm just gonna see if this is what I'm looking for. That looks like your desktop. So if you're there, you, do you use Safari or something? Yeah, that was what I was going to use for. Um, well, you could just click on that Safari, Safari and go to eBay. You're on a Google Docs right here. This isn't a live page. Okay, yeah. Well, you could close that if that would help, you know, you don't want too many things open. Right. So I have the page open that I want behind this and that's where I'm trying to figure out why I can't get to it. I had such, this worked so easily yesterday when, I, when we did, we went through it. Um, are you are you saying that there's a page on this same thing? So maybe the arrows over next to the red, yellow, green. If you hit one of those arrows there, right you no, know, on your left top. Well, what has happened is yesterday I set up a 
way so I could go to create a listing. So Maureen, I think what you could do right now is just click on Safari. See how it's behind the slide? Okay. Or now it's, it's gone now. But I don't think she can close the window, Vicki, because it's, a, it's like a slide, it's not a live window. Yeah, I didn't know if she had another slide. <laughs> why I was suggesting the arrows. Okay, what I'm looking for is the live eBay. And you're right, Diane, that would be like in Safari or something. You had the, your desktop, I mean, you could go through it with us by going on the desktop. Okay, so I have the page open. So if I go to share screen, it should come up. Yep, but you'd have to pull the whole page up into your monitor screen so that you can see all your options. Okay, I'm going to try this one again just to see if this looks live to you. Can you see the screen? It's the same tell us, page. Tell us what you're selling. And it's got a cursor in it blinking, so that may okay. be live. This is the page I want, okay? Okay. So this is what you'll, so when I pressed that button that said, um, set, you know, start selling, this is what will come up. And it will say, tell us what you're selling. In this case, you type in what it is that you want. And I'm going to write down. An LL Bean sweater. Okay, I'm going to start, I'm going to do it under women's clothing, you can drop down men's clothing, kids, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So I'm going to do LL Bean clothing, women's clothing sweaters. Press that. And you see creating a draft, okay? I'm gonna be creating my listing. Hello Bean sweater, probably want a little bit more information. So it's in Argyle. Um, and probably is, would you just do size medium? Okay. Um, there's automatically I update the item specifics. All of that looks good. Um, store category. If you are doing, you know, if you want to separate things that you're selling into clothing versus um, automobile parts and collectibles, you can set up categories for yourself to do that. And then also if you have say, oh, an item, but you have five different colors and five different sizes, you can create variations of that. So you don't have to do a listing for every single item. You can do it all under one listing and you just create variations by pressing this button and it'll walk you through how to do that. If it's brand new, you can put in the UPC or you can do a drop down. If you, sometimes if you do a drop down, it says you don't need to do it if it's, if it's used. And the condition in this case will be pre-owned. And the description would be whether it's got moth holes in it or if it's in great condition, if it has repairs, if it has those kinds of things, this is where you put that information in. Some people just write pre-owned which doesn't give you a lot of information. But if it doesn't have any holes in it, then you can write it's in great shape or good condition. So be careful when you do this though, um, because if you say that it's pristine, um, people have a different take sometimes on what that wording means. So be very careful using words like excellent or pristine, unless it truly is just basically brand new. Otherwise people will return it saying that it wasn't as it wasn't pristine or it wasn't excellent or whatever. Now this is where you add photos. So you go to add photos, you've already taken the photos and edited them somewhere. So in this case, I put them on my desktop Sometimes they're under photos. You decide where you want to put your photos after you take them. Most people put them in photos, edit them, 
I just doing this on my desktop. I moved them to the desktop to, for today because it was easier to do. So I'm going to click the picture I want, press upload, and there's the picture. I'm going to take another picture. This is the back of it. And there we have two pictures. You can take more. You can take pictures of labels. The other thing I usually do is pictures of labels and pictures of um, you know, the L.L. Bean label. And then if there is a side label in the garment, I put that in. It tells you the contents or washing instructions or whatever. So this filled in automatically. L.L. Bean, sweater, and women's department. So the style is a pullover. The size type is regular, unless you obviously have a petite. That's your other option. If you look under that, you have regular plus petite, tall, juniors, and maternity. So you press that, and then the size medium came up automatically. And the color on this, I would say is multicolor because it has the argyle design on it. And now for material, which quite honestly is good to also put in your description, which I didn't do. This happens to be a cashmere sweater and it's 100% cashmere, so you check that. Um, the theme is kind of corny, I think, um, but you can decide whether you want to use it or not. Um, I usually skip that. The neckline on this, I believe, was a V-neck. I'm going to actually go back up and take a picture. Oh, yep, it's a V-neck. OK. So neckline, you go down. Again, go down to V-neck, click. Sleeve length, sleeveless, short sleeve, three-quarter sleeve, or long sleeve. Features on this. Um, you know, sometimes you have fringe or um, sparkles, beading, and you can add those. Or if it's a half zip, the pattern. Um, so you go down here and argyle and diamond. You can see all of the different options that you have. Solid stripe, polka dots, plaids, herringbone. So argyle or diamond. The sleeve type on this, I think, was a set in. I don't think it was a raglan, but I, I'm going to uh, I forget if it was a raglan or not, but no, it's not. Uh, cold shoulder. You know, sometimes it's really not a description. Some you can you don't have to fill everything in quite honestly. People can see from the picture what it is. The fabric type, this is a knit, so scroll down to knit. Um, character again, I usually skip over unless it really fits Barbie or Angel or Astro Boy. Otherwise I skip over that. This is if you have accents beaded, fringe or it's embroidered, crochet fur trim, glitter jewel logo. This has none of those, so I'll skip over that again. Uh, no character family to this one. And I've lost my, oh. Okay, I'm gonna go down a little bit further. Knit style. So this is a close knit or a tight knit sweater. So I put that in. Some sweaters are bulky, loose knit. It's not vintage, so you press no. Again, I'm sort of losing my, um, well, you'll have to somehow, there. And here is where you do your description. So you would do something like, I'm not gonna do a full description. The other thing after you do that, you do the size. And the thing people like, even for sweaters, are things like underarm to underarm. Because we all know mediums vary. Um, 
So generally I'm just gonna write 20 and this was a medium. The other thing that you wanna do is the length of the garment. I usually measure from the back next seam to the bottom. Um, I guess I'm gonna guess again at 19 on that. Um, obviously you'll take measurements. And the other thing is your sleeve. And I'm just gonna write 23 on that. And then you write a little bit further description of um, the condition of it. You know, the sweater's in great condition, has no moth holes. Um, the other thing people will ask is whether it's from a smoke-free home. And that is important to some people who are, have sensitivities. So you might wanna write that in. Also, people wanna know if there are any animals. So people who have sensitivity, you don't, if you don't write it in, they'll ask if they're really sensitive to that. So that's up to you whether you want to. And then the next thing you do here is um, you talk about your, you know, accepting, oh. yeah. Uh, you can accept PayPal. And that's usually all I write down. And then you talk about your shipping within, and then you decide how many days it usually would take you to pack something and get to the post office. Um, the other nice thing to say is that, um, you know, please contact me if you have questions and ask for, if you have questions. before bidding because if somebody bids on something and wins it and then asks you a question they say well i don't really want that it's kind of a pain in the neck quite honestly to go back and then you know, reverse the sale so it would be good to have people do that and the other thing at this point you may want to say whether you ship overseas or if you only ship in the united states it's something that, you know, you know, just kind of write your shipping policy down. You know, however you want to word that. Um, and the other thing is about the color. Um, again, I do no color guarantee. You know, because of Because of monitor variations, however you want to again word that. That way, if someone says this gray wasn't was more of a brown gray than a blue gray, it was darker than I expected or lighter than I expected. You know, it depends on how you look at it on the computer and what kind of a monitor you have, how the colors look. So it's always, I'm finding this is more important to state that. And then you have a choice of either a fixed price for the item or if you want bidding on it. And again, that's completely up to you. So with the fixed price or auction style. So two different ways of doing it. I'll just start with the auction style. Usually it goes for 10 days, or for, I'm sorry, seven days. If you wanted to go longer, you have an option of 10 days or fewer days. Seven days, there's no charge for. So most people go with seven days. You wanna start your listings when I submit them or if you want to put it on another day, two days down the line or whatever, you can choose to do that. I figure once you started this, you're probably on a roll. So you probably do it right away. So your starting price. And again, you would look up what does an LL Bean sweater sell for? Cashmere, Argyle sweater, say they normally sell for $25. So your starting price should be somewhat close to it. If you start at 99 cents, that might be what you get for it. If nobody notices it, nobody bids on it, one person bids 99 cents, you're stuck with that. So put it on a price that you would say, 
it's okay. It wasn't as much as I wanted, but there it is. So say you started at 15. You can do a buy it now, which is automatically shown to you at 1950. So you can do that. So someone could do a buy it now at 1950. If you're happy with that, you can press that. If you're hoping to get more than that, you could take your chances that in seven days, it will go up. Again, that's up to you. Now I'm gonna show you how you would do the same. Oh, okay. Well, you could also let people make offers. Let me go back here. So if you wanted to say you would accept an offer of say $14, you could put that in. Or if you want to decline offers lower than say $12, you can put that in. You know, all of these are your own judgment call as to what you think will work here. I'm going to just do this for down. Now I'm going to go back up and I'm going to show you how to do it at a fixed price. With the fixed price, there is no time limit on it. You decide if you want to cancel it, you decide it's been on too long, it's not going anywhere. It will be on there for a month and automatically it will show up again. You do get charged when it renews. Each time it renews, you get charged a fee for it. So again, you choose whether you want to start it right away or not. I do start my listings when I submit them. So again, you want to do a buy it now price. So again, you, we're hoping to $25. So maybe you'll start it at 28. And then you do offers. And on the offer part of this, you may say I'll automatically accept say 25. And then you'll decline offers maybe at 23. So if somebody bids 23, it just automatically gets declined. So we'll leave it at that for now. And then we'll go down, you know, if you have happen to have two of them, you can put two in, um, you know, that are identical or other items that are identical. You can put as many as you have. These are some things you can allow buyers to remain anonymous to the eBay, eBay buyers. I don't check these. You can make a donation to a charity. Payment options require immediate payment with Buy It Now. That is a good one to hit. Um, they figure out the taxes depending on the state that people are buying it from. You know, you did, people will say, you know, how come I was charged sales tax? There's no, con you have no control over sales tax. That's completely up to eBay to figure out the sales tax. And if you don't want to require a payment and people want to do a buy it now and pay in a couple of days, that's fine too. You can just uncheck them. And this is whether you want to accept returns or not. So you can do domestic returns accepted and you can do up to 30 days, or if you check this, returns will not be accepted unless it doesn't match the listing description. So again, that's up to you whether you wanna deal with returns or whether you just wanna say, you know, pe people will change their minds. So, well, I didn't really like it now that I've got it. Well, they can't change it. You know, if they change their mind, it's really, you don't have to accept the return. If you described it incorrectly, um, somehow in the listing, you did the wrong color, you did the wrong size, they, they are allowed to return it. And even if you've checked off that you don't accept returns. Well, here's our shipping detail. So what you've done so far is you've got the sweater, you've taken pictures of it, you've put it in a bag, a shipping bag, um, and then you weigh it. I have just a really basic, small scale. It's nothing fancy. In fact, let me just, I thought I had it right with me here. It's something I think I bought at, I don't know, one of the local stores. And if you have a bulky item, what I do is I put like a tray on it so it'll hold the bulky item and then obviously deduct the weight of the tray. A sweater, a cashmere sweater, 
I'm just going to guess that if I were to put that in a bag and get it ready for shipping, it would probably weigh 13 ounces or less because their cashmere sweaters are pretty light. So I'm going to go to my calculate shipping and type of package. It's going to be a package. The dimensions, again, I'm just going to guess on this, but for the most part, it'll probably be 12 by 10 by three inches. And as long as that package size is not an extraordinary amount over, you know, 18 to 20 inches, you can, if it turns out the package is 10 by eight by two, it's fine. It's gonna, it's in the ballpark and it's not critical. So the weight here, I'm going to put in is 13 ounces. Again, it shows you zip code, and destination. Again, if you're doing international shipping, you would do that, just domestic. And the calculate shipping is done by eBay. You just go drop down and you can see your package dimensions, your weight. No, I do not charge a handling fee. The zip code you're shipping from. Um, and these are the rates that come up. You have economy service, standard service, expedited services, and most of it's, I usually use the post office. If you like FedEx, you can set up an account with FedEx or UPS to do this online. Post office is pretty convenient for me, so I usually use that. And you can see the different pricing here. So the Parcel Select, this is to New York, Chicago, and LA. So it gives you an idea across the country, the varying rates. If you're shipping something under a pound, generally speaking, first class is less expensive. And you can see the, the rates here from 722 to 705, 787 to 730, 903 to 765. So I would pick the US first class. You can Excuse me, Maureen. Yes. You're, you're no longer live. We can't see what you're entering and what you're referring to, just so you know. I wonder how that happened. I can see it. I can see what she's I can see the mouse moving. I don't think she's typing anything in. I see her, I see her cursor moving. Yeah, but okay. the, what she's referring to is not showing up. We can't see but, those. Oh, things. I can see it. I don't think she's typing or doing anything except moving the cursor. You're not choosing any options, right? Well, I just chose UPS first class. Did you see that? I see it says UPS parcel select graph. Right. Yeah, this, Maureen, this looks like a slide versus. Oh, your, maybe this is a slide. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's not changed. It's, okay. Well, okay. yeah, I can see the cursor, but I don't see any options being chosen. Okay, I'm going to do office shipping services. I'm going to press that button, see if you see. Are you seeing anything now? That yes. works. Okay, yeah. somehow when I went to do that, for some reason, when I did the calculate shipping, it somehow didn't show up on your screens, evidently. I don't understand why. But it's an There's something there now. There's something there now. Okay, so you are seeing. So when I press calculate shipping, which is something really, quite honestly, automatic to do, somehow that didn't show up on your screens. What you do is you'll have this information here. It will show up on, when you say calculate shipping, you then go to the screen and it will show you your dimensions and your weight. Then you go to the next screen and it shows you the pricing from the post office. And generally, obviously, you'll try to select the least expensive for the person purchasing it to send it. And I'm not quite sure whether, why that won't show up on your screens. But when you come back, you will see the information, you know, that it was a UPS first class that it was chosen. You can offer additional services such as um, priority mail, or if 
If you'd like to work with UPS or FedEx, you can do those. Quite honestly, for lightweight items, the post office is as reasonable as any. So again, I'm not quite sure why the calculate shipping screen didn't show up. But when I came back, it obviously came back to this screen. And whether that's because it's, I don't think the post office has control of it, but it's basically eBay is using the post office calculations. But if, if you have it calculate based on the recipient, it won't, would it actually tell you? But up about, yeah, because you have it by buyer location. Right. And that's the same. So they, you're looking at your item, yeah. you're going to maybe see $7. If somebody in Chicago is looking at it, they may see $8. If someone in California is looking at it, they huh. may see $9 for shipping. And it just depends on where the person is buying from. So they'll see different prices depending on where they live. Right. So this wouldn't, this page wouldn't calculate it unless you chose a different option besides buyer location, right? I always, leave, I always leave it at buyer location because it will automatically calculate the cost for the person looking at the item. It's much easier. You don't have to, you can do it if somebody asked you how much would it cost to send it to someplace. You can actually just go and look and calculate where they live from their zip code and then tell them, quite honestly, they should see it on their screen. So you really shouldn't have to answer that question because it's automatically done by eBay. Once you put this cost varies by buyer location and you choose the type of shipping you want and you've got your dimensions, it's pretty much a go. You shouldn't have to answer questions about shipping, but you know, after you do the calculate shipping and you go to that page and pick all of the information, how you want it shipped, it's automatic from there. So it's, it's really not necessary to, you, know, you shouldn't have to answer questions about shipping once it's done, unless the person wants a different way of shipping it. If they want it um, priority mail, then you can, tell, you can figure out priority mail. Again, from that same screen that said calculate shipping, you can go to that and figure out priority mail. And that's only if someone is in a hurry, I guess. Um, okay, exclusions. So you can create an exclusion list. Again, can you see what I'm doing now? Can you see this screen that says select yeah. regions? Yeah, okay. we can see it, it's great. Okay. So here you say the regions are countries you do not ship to, okay? And I press this, I do not do any, um, and again, you can do PO boxes if you want to, or if you don't mind shipping to PO boxes, that's fine. Um, and then you can do save and close. Okay, and that shows up on your screen now. And you can edit it any time. And that's where the item is located. And they always like to upsell you on things if you, you can promote your listing and they charge you for it. Um, or you can just go with the regular price. You can offer discounts when buyers purchase more than one item. Again, you can figure out if they buy two items, you know, they can get a discount on it. Again, these are all judgment calls that you can make. And then the fees will come up um, down here. It's usually like 25 cents an item. Um, Rarely is it more, unless you have a very expensive thing, but most of the time you'll see 25 cents there. And then you would press list item. Or if you want to go back and look at something on say, you know, gee, I don't know if that size was right that I put down, you can save it as a draft and go back to it at another time. Or you can cancel it. And this is the preview. I'm not sure you'll see this, but can you see this? screen where it shows the sweater no you can't see that i can't okay so the, evidently the pop-ups that this is a preview so you can look at what it will look like on when it's listed on ebay 
it's a good place to go to just make sure your spelling is okay, your sizing is good, just kind of an overview. And you might see something there where you forgot to put a space between the two words, it will kind of stand out. And I'm going to cancel this obviously, since it's really not, I don't want it to go live. And if you were doing it and have the listing ready to go, you'd press list item again, if you want to save it as a draft to go back to it and review it again, before you list it, you would save it as a draft. So I'm going to do cancel. And then it says, do you sure you want to cancel it? And I'm saying yes. Okay. And then it'll bring you back to manage active listings, that kind of stuff. So again, I'm going back to the screen and I think we're all still alive. Yes. Diana? You're there. Okay. Uh, yeah, we're good. Um, should we maybe start asking some questions? Are you ready for them? I am. Okay, cool. So, I can answer as many as I can. So Kathy had asked about the calculating shipping and we, we reviewed yeah. all of that. Um, Paula had asked if you would send the slides, but the this program is being recorded. So it'll be okay. on our YouTube channel, which is very fancy. Okay. Um, and I think that's all the questions that we had. I had a couple of questions. Can I ask sure. you a couple? Yeah. Um, what do you feel does better for the, the clothing barn, the buy it now or an auction? I do a buy it now. One of the reasons I do that, I, and this is very selfish, it requires less work. Once you put it up, you don't have to after seven days go back and renew it, which I think is kind of, it's, it can be time consuming. So if you do a steward to buy it now, take your best guess at the price that you feel is reasonable and go with it. And then my other question is, do you ever um, add insurance because things can go missing? Not so much for things that are going missing, for breakable things. Okay. Um, if something seems to go missing, the, you can go to USPS and file a claim with them. And they are very good at finding things. Once you file that claim, you'll usually see the magic happen. You know, within a few days, the package arrives. Um, so once they're alerted to it, they really do act on it. And I've not had a package missing. I mean, I've had them seem like they're missing. And then I file a claim and it shows up. So I don't know why, but the post office definitely is much better than it was last year in terms of that. Um, had lots of problems last year with packages taking forever to get there or just all of a sudden there was no scan saying it moved from one location to the other. Had a couple of problems this year, but I'd say overall things move along with the post office. And again, if you find someone who says, you know, I haven't gotten this, it's been three weeks. Well, you can file a claim and the post office will look into it. Uh, Teresa had a really great question about um, sales tax. It's, you know, it's calculated by eBay. Um, do you have to, you're not responsible then for sending it to the state? Nope. Nope, it's automatically done, which is wonderful. Um, you know, that's automatically taken care of by eBay. <clears throat> and then the, and another Teresa, Teresa Mayhew was asking mm -hmm. if you have any tricks um, that we need to know about selling on Facebook Marketplace. No, um, I've done both. And you know, as I said, I, I find Facebook Marketplace is a great place to sell a large item. Um, I'm trying to think, we sold an old desk that we had around and didn't have any space for it in the house. And, you know, the perfect person, you know, was looking for a desk that, you know, at that particular time and came to the house and it worked out perfectly for them. It just seems like that has been a really great place for us to move larger items. And, I have not any scamming at all. Quite honestly, you just say cash only. 
it's the easiest way to do it as well. Don't take checks. Um, no credit cards, obviously, if you're doing, you know, sell from your home, you're not going to be able to process that. But you just say cash only. And people can go to the, their bank and get cash and show up. So that has been a great place. Um, yeah, just a great place to sell big things. Great. Um, does anybody else have any questions? We kind of went through the all the ones that are in the chat. Yes, question, I do. Question on income tax. How how much do you have to sell before you are involved with income tax? Okay. I, I thank you for asking that, Roy. I forgot. I believe it's now twenty thousand dollars. If you sell twenty thousand dollars worth of goods on eBay, it a report gets sent to the IRS. It's a lot of sales. Um, I have a question. Yes. Yes. I, I've had trouble um, posting pictures. How do you post your pictures? Are they from your phone or what? I take them with my phone and then they automatically go to my photos on my computer. I don't know how you're how you do it. But well, I've taken them from my camera, but I guess that they're too large or something. Okay. Do you have a phone that has a good camera? Yes. Yeah, I do. Yeah, that's the way I do it because, it, again, it automatically gets transferred to my photos on my computer. And then you can go and edit them on your computer. I've tried transferring them from a, before I had a phone that took good pictures, I had to do it with a camera and then transfer it to the computer. And it was, it's a lot harder. The new All right, thank you. You're welcome. Have you ever, have you ever sold jewelry or yes. non-clothing items? I'm more interested in selling that kind of stuff. Yes. And actually my artwork, but. Okay. Um, yes, I do. And if you go to the, the um, North Chatham website, and that you'll find that information on the newsletter if you go to the North Chatham United Methodist Church website. There is a newsletter, and in that newsletter under Clothing Barn, you will see the information about the website, and you'll see the jewelry that's listed that's been donated to the church. Okay. And it's fairly easy to sell um, because they're small. <laughs> which is great, easy to package. Depending on the value of it, um, I tend to sell things that are more expensive. I say that I will ship them in a small priority mailbox, which is about $8.50 or something like that. Can't remember what they cost. But that way you have a box to put the jewelry in. It's also insured up to $100. So it's a good way to ship something that has some value. If it's you know, a $20 item, I, I wouldn't do that because people don't wanna pay that kind of money to ship it. But if they're buying something of value, $100 or more, it's a good way to ship it. It's a UPS, uh, USPS small flat rate box. And again, it's insured. So it's nice to do it that way. Oh, I think if somebody's frozen, is it me? Hello. You're fine, You're fine Maureen. <laughs> yeah. All right. Hi, this is Maria. One of the things I have found is the biggest surprise most people would like to see on eBay free shipping. Okay. You do. <laughs> For some reason, they love that. However, you need to plan to add at least. 14 to $20 to that item in order to cover the shipping. Even with the box, um, it was a big surprise to me when I first started on eBay, how expensive the shipping is. It's really expensive. Mm -hmm. So well, when you think about, you know, this is only a warning having done this work before, this you need to take into account is your item going to sell for that extra 12 or 14 dollars 
that's mm-hmm. got to go on. And it could be as much as 20. So, you know, you need, depending on the size, right? right? So you need to be able to really look at your items and make sure that, is this really what I want to do? Do I really want to do this on eBay? Mm-hmm. Um, I, I just posted a piece of furniture on the marketplace and I already, and I got a scammer right off the bat. Oh, okay. He says, I really want this item. I'm going to give you $50 to hold it. And my friend's going to come pick it up <laughs> and I'll send you a check, cashier's check. Oh, right. You say, no, thank you very much. Exactly. Okay? Because that there are, there are so many scams going on mm-hmm. that you have, you have to be extremely careful. You and the, the, the way you do it, and if, you, if you're not sure, you can run it by me. I don't care. But the reality is, is that there are a lot of scammers out there that are trying to get your stuff, trying to get your money, you know, because yes. even that. So um, you have to be. And then thirdly, that I can't, I, uh, and I know that you did, Maureen, uh, emphasize this. The pictures have to be clear. The pictures have to really show the item truly. Uh, if you put in blurry or background pictures with a lot of crap in the background, excuse my French, no, I get you're it. not going. You're not going to get people interested in the item. So you really have to set up the picture so that it, uh, it looks good. And you can Photoshop the background if you know how to use Photoshop. Or just put a, a, a towel or a blanket behind it that's uh, solid color and take that picture, okay? So those are some of the, I mean, that's just a little bit of what I might suggest. Right, right. I agree. I think that I've seen so many pictures on eBay that are so blurry. I have no idea what the quality of the item is. That's why that sweater that um, I showed you is actually one that's on. Um, and you know, you, as you say, when you first take the picture, you have to edit it because it's not going to look like that when you first take it. And just learn some editing tools. Um, you know, they're right on photos or whatever kind of computer you have. It's it's not hard to to do, and it really makes a big difference. I agree with when people do flowers and tablecloths on the you know underneath it. It's very confusing to look at the picture. So I agree, I think just a plain background, find a place that's a white door and take your picture. It's good advice. Maureen, this is Terry. I, I tried to list on market, uh, market uh, Facebook Marketplace. Because yes. I never could actually see my uh, listing appear after it was supposedly listed. And um, and I'm just curious, I don't, I don't know what happened, but with my history and and technology, it's not too surprising. But um, when you are listing it on Facebook Marketplace, so how are people communicating with you? They're communicating you to you through market. Is it through your instant messenger? Is it how how does that how does that actually work? Yep. Um, you can do it by email, but or you can. Um, yeah, I think Ed, Ed does more of the marketplace. I've done the, I've actually done the listings and then Ed does the communication with people. And I think most of it is through um, instant messaging. Sometimes okay. you'll get an email. Yeah. Sorry, you sorry to interrupt you, Maureen. Terry, I've done Facebook marketplace okay. and they've contacted me through just like the app. So I actually have to go into Facebook to see the message. There might be another way to set it up. Oh. If you wanted to come to the library and have me help you do your listing, I'd be happy to help you. Oh, well, boy. Because I have done it and I have been very oh. successful. Although one thing I have to say that happened to me, which was such a nightmare, is this lovely couple bought four bookcases from me and the husband came without any help and I had to help him load the bookcases. Oh, so oh, yeah. <laughs> and I don't ever move bookcases, but I was stuck. He had a trailer. So I, if I had to do it over again, I would definitely say cannot help move. Bring them over. Yeah, I, I would. Uh, thank you for offering, Diana. I think I will up on that. Thank you. Of course. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, we've had that happen on Facebook too, where a woman wanted us to deliver a desk on the seventh floor of a building. <laughs> I 
I looked at my husband and said, we can't do that. I mean, we physically can't lift this desk, get it to Albany, and then go up seven floors with it and get it to somebody's apartment. And I said, it, and we said, you know, sorry, we just can't do it. I mean, it's not a realistic thing to say that you'll move anything. Are there other questions that folks have? What happens if you're selling, you know, something worth more than a hundred dollars, like a piece of jewelry or something? Have you, has anybody have experience with that? Small items, but worth more. Yep. Yeah, I've sold items well over a hundred dollars. Um, in terms of shipping it, or in terms of what did um, what is your question? Is I price? guess insuring it, um, okay. listing prices. Um. Yeah. Um, again, I would do it if it's over. I think it's if it's over a thousand dollars, you automatically have to do it with a signature um, required upon delivery, and obviously you just. It's going to cost more for the um, insurance, depending on the value. Yeah, depending on the value of it. In an item like that, sometimes you eat a little bit in terms of that, unless you want to figure it out ahead of time how much the item will sell for and what the insurance will be. On a item, say if it's fifteen hundred dollars, that's when you sometimes can say free shipping because it's probably going to cost you figure twenty dollars. $25. So it's worth it in that case. Most of the time, free shipping is not worth it because, yeah, we all know it's the same price as the item. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it is, you know, again, if you went to the North Chatham website, you can see that there are items over, over $100 on there. And sometimes it's free shipping. Again, it's really a judgment call on your part, whether you know the eight to ten dollars that if you did free shipping would cost you, and you know whether it would make a sale, or if you want to just add ten dollars to your listing price and say free shipping and kind of cover yourself. Right. Like Amazon does. I'm sorry? Like Amazon does. Exactly. Right. And that's where people got the idea of free shipping, that everybody should have free shipping, is that large companies obviously have contracts with UPS, FedEx, and the post office to deliver things. And they can afford free shipping because they're not paying the same as we're paying, you know, to send things. They have a better- But also way. Amazon, if you go to the merchant who actually sells the stuff, it's usually, it used to be in the beginning, Amazon was cheaper, but now the actual provider is usually cheaper than Amazon. Of course, you buy more stuff to get the fifty dollars over fifty dollars free shipping, but you know you bought the other thing for four dollars, not right twelve. Yeah, it, it's a challenge. You just have to really you do have to play with everything in terms of looking at different angles, and it just takes time. I mean, I've been doing this for quite a long time. So I've made mistakes along the way, believe me, and I've learned from them and you move on. <laughs> you know, and it's, you lose a little money sometimes. But I think if you have collectibles or, you know, good jewelry, handmade jewelry, another place to, for handmade items is Etsy or Etsy. Um, right. And I don't remember what their policy is in terms of the amount. I, I did try that, but it was too difficult for me, quite honestly, to run two different programs. I just, I don't have that kind of time. So I stuck with eBay and Facebook Marketplace just because it's a whole lot easier for me. Oh, I have a question. Um, yes. If, you, if you've determined that um, <clears throat> uh, something will go into uh, one of the prepaid USPS boxes. Um, would you just include that? Somebody mentioned free shipping. Just say free shipping and just include that in, because 
it shouldn't vary, right? If you're confining it to the continental U.S. Right. Well, right. It's just, you know, the flat rate boxes is what you're talking about. And then mm -hmm. exactly what they are, flat rate boxes. They do tend to be more expensive if you're shipping to somebody on the East Coast, however. So, you know, mm. it's really, it, you know, again, it's a challenge. If you're selling something, say, um, something that's one pound, one to two pounds, and you put it in a flat rate box, it might be $14 or so to ship it. Yet, if you did that same item without that box and just in your packaging, it might be mm. about half of that for somebody mm. on the East Coast. So it's a savings for people on the West Coast, but not necessarily for people on the East Coast. So um, there are times when that's very convenient, though. Mm -hmm. so packages are available. Yeah, Maureen, I, this is Terry. I have found, I, I've made really good friends with the fellow at my post office, mm -hmm. uh, Connor. I, he's my best buddy. I'll go <laughs> in with items, like even when I'm shipping something to my son who lives in LA, and I'll do it without a priority box. Or he'll, he'll say to me, he goes, if you have a smaller box at home, it's going to be, you know, like you just said, half the price. Yep. So he'll, he'll encourage me to go re repackage it to save me money. Um, so it's really where, if you have the luxury of time, it's really not a bad idea to run those those items to the post office in what you think is packaging and right. see if priority is going to be a better deal or not. And I, I just sent something priority mail and it was, they only told me it was $50 insurance uh, free. Um, so I'm not sure where you got the $100 from. I'll have to ask them about that because I was told only $50. What was the value of the item? I didn't even declare it. She just said it, it includes $50 insurance. Um, so I will ask the next time I'm in. Yeah, you can just go on the um, website, the USPS website, mm -hmm. and it will explain it there as well. Yeah, I'll take a peek. I'm pretty sure it's $100. It used to be 50. Yeah, well, I, well, I will, I save my receipt. So I will go and <laughs> I'll get my money. I'll get my $3.15 back if I need to. So, <laughs> all right, thank you. I have, but thank you very much. You're welcome. You're welcome. Heavy um, things are good with those prepaid. I have a welder friend who sends massive metal things that you can squeeze into some of those boxes. And, you know, that's it, so if you have something very heavy, is there, it's yes, real bang for the buck. Yes, I agree. It, that's where it does come in handy. Is for a heavy item. Um, yeah, but they have pound limits too. They have weight limits on those property boxes. Pounds, I think. Um, the only thing about getting packaging, you can go on eBay itself and buy packaging, you know, plus bags, that type of thing, fairly inexpensively. If you're starting to do this and you're finding out that you go to a store and you're trying to buy bags to ship things. It can get pricey if you're buying small quantities. Sometimes if you buy a larger quantity on eBay, you, you'll find a savings. Also for padding, bubble wrap, that type of thing. Somebody was saying that they were going to do collectibles. Um, that's something that you're going to need some good bubble wrap for. And I found that you can buy huge quantities of bubble wrap on eBay. You look around and it's, it's not that expensive. It's usually free shipping because it weighs nothing. And it's a good way to have that on hand instead of going to maybe Staples and buying a small roll of it. You know, if you're not doing very much of it, a small roll is fine. But if you're doing a lot of things or big items that need to be well padded, it's worth it to buy a large roll of bubble wrap. And again, buying bags by a little bit of quantity on eBay. You can buy them 10, 50, 100, 200. You know, obviously, it depends on your, your volume. Um, there is also one thing I didn't mention on eBay. They do have what they call now stores. So you can just do it one item at a time. If you only have a few things, I wouldn't say, you know, kind of buy into the store program. But if you think this is something you're going to continue to do and you'll have a, a good number of items on at one point. The eBay store has some advantages in that it's a flat rate for a month 
And then if you go over a certain number of listings, you pay for those listings. Otherwise, if you don't have that, you pay for the listings every time it comes up. And it, you, know, you would have to weigh whether, you know, if you only have say 20 items on, don't do the eBay store. If you have several hundred items on, then it might be worth considering doing an eBay store. And there are different levels of eBay stores as well. And the higher ones are obviously for people that do it quite frequently and have a lot of items, mostly people who are commercial sellers, quite honestly. People that are selling the bags and the bubble wrap, you know, they're, you know, do it frequently, they do a good volume. So they'll be into a, a higher level store. And that's again, something that you can read on eBay about what that all means. So Maureen, I'm gonna go ahead and add our survey into the chat. People are saying that they have to leave the program, okay. but they just said, thank you for your presentation. Everyone's really, really enjoyed it. So I'm going to add um, that link and send it to everyone in the chat. And if you could please uh, fill it out, if you can't open it, um, please let me know. Okay. Um, but I also added in the handout. So that's also in the chat. Roy, are you still here? Yes, and okay. I'd, I'd like to thank Maureen for her presentation thank and you, uh, Diana and Vicki helping us with the library. Yes. And I, unless somebody has a burning question, why well, I think probably this is about toward the end. It was wonderful, Maureen. Thank you so much. Yeah. You did a, an amazing job. I learned a lot. Oh, I hope so. Um, um, you know that it's not everything you're going to learn. As I said, I've made my share of mistakes on eBay in terms of listing, in terms of pricing, in terms of shipping. And, you know, like any enterprise, you're going to make mistakes as you go along. I mean, after 35 years in business, we made a lot of mistakes you know, through the years. We learned. Try not to make them again. And that's the way you do it <laughs> in any business. Does anybody else have any questions before the library um, closes down? I'm just putting the, um, the handout into the chat again. So hopefully, uh, Teresa, you can see that. It's a word. I see the link, the link that. I see a few times that you put up that goes to the um, evaluation form. Is there another? Yeah, here, I'll, I'll send it to you. Um, it's in the chat box for everyone, but I'll send it just to you. No, uh, but I mean, I can get that. That's the evaluation form. Is there another handout? Yeah, the handout is a Word oh. document. It's called buying and selling handout. Let me try to oh. send it directly to you. Because I'm trying to see where that is. Um, yeah, I don't see it. I also emailed it. Um, oh, is it email? Oh, I didn't look at this morning's email. I can see it in the chat that it's there. It says buying and selling handout. It went to everyone. Buying and selling handout. Dot doc. I don't see it either. I don't see okay, it. Let me try it again. I can see it. Um, can anyone see it? I can see it. Buying and selling handout. I can see it. It's the last thing in the chat. I just sent it again. Or it's at the bottom. Yeah, it's at the bottom. I don't know. I'm looking. <laughs> Teresa, I can always just email it to you, honestly. Yeah. Okay. And if you don't see my email, please check your spam because the, the address uh, publicity at um, northchathamlibrary.org is sometimes ending up in people's spam folders, which we're going to mm. smooth that out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So is everyone able to open up the survey? Is that, was that working for you? Yeah, I could get the survey. I just still you know, don't see the, uh, I don't see anything in the chat for the handout. Yeah, no, no, it's no worries. So we'll all okay. at the meeting now. I, want, I hope everyone mm -hmm. has a wonderful day and that you stay warm. And I will send you it uh, via email. As soon as Thank we you. Yeah, of Thank course. You. Thank you so much again, Maureen. Thank you, Roy. Thank you for having me. Thank you.
Bye, y'all. Oh, here it is. Okay. Oh, great. That's perfect. I, I see it in email now. Yay! I see it. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you so much. Of course. Take care, everybody. Thank you.